You know you need a 24-hour urine collection, but these are three things you need to know before doing the 24-hour urine collection. Welcome back to the Kidney Stone Diet Podcast, the show about reducing your kidney stone risk and living your best life. I'm your host and fellow student, Jeff Saris. And Jill Harris, your kidney stone prevention nurse. Hi, guys. <laughs> and we are back. We're back. Another week. Three. Another yep. big anchor kind of point of the kidney stone diet, the 24-hour urine collection. Yep. And this has been something that's so key yes. just to anyone who's trying to make the change and sort of to live the better life. Yes. You... This is, uh, I mean, Jeff and Amara, who's in the background here, must be so sick of hearing me talk about this. But it would be like, I don't know, any, you, you have to be tested with any medical condition to see why you have that medical condition. You must. Why do we just drop this with kidney stone prevention? Oh, Jill, my doctor says I don't need it. <gasps> why would the doctor say you don't need a test to find out why you have a medical condition? You need to push back. So there's that. I'm done. I'll probably say it again during this, but I'm just warning you. I get so mad about this because, because well, I'll tell you later. So the first <laughs> thing. A little tease. <laughs> I'll tell you later. The first thing you should be aware of before you do a 24-hour urine collection is you're supposed to. Eat like you did when you were forming kidney stones. Oh, Jill, there's no way I'm going to eat spinach again. No way. I know. <laughs> I know you're not going to. So it's obvious that you're going to give up the highest oxalate foods. But the gold standard of doing a urine collection is to eat exactly how you did. So if you were eating jujubes all day and, and corn chips, that's what you're supposed to do. Maybe drinking Miller High Life all day long. I don't know what the hell you were doing to make your stone. But whatever you were, you should do it on the day of co your collection so you can see how the, those foods bothered your urine chemistry. Now. Because I've talked to all of you for 25 years, I know you're not going to eat spinach and almond products during your urine collection. Hell no to that almond milk, Jill. I threw that out after that stent. So I get it. But, so I, I'll let you do that one. But I would prefer it if you just drank normally, how you did, how you did when you made your kidney stone. If you want to give up your uh, spinach and almonds, because people freak out so much about those, fine but that's not what you're supposed to do but 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 i know you probably will go out to eat if you go out to eat all the time again if you don't drink that much water don't drink that much water we want to see why you made that stone we want to see how the sodium and added sugar affected your urine collection here's what i hear listen to this jill there's no way I'm going to do it eating like a nun and drinking like super person. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so here's the scenario. What happens? That patient does the urine collection like a nun. They go get their results with the doctor. The doctor's like, I don't know why the hell I'm ordering these urine collections. They, they're stupid. They're, I don't know why you're making stones. Your diet's fine. Meanwhile, the patient doesn't say, well, doc, I changed it. I didn't eat almonds. I didn't eat spinach. And then the doctors tell me, Jill, stop hollering about these urine collections. The, it's not diet. These people, they're eating fine. And there's just nothing. Well, doctor, they're not telling you that they, they ate cotton for the urine collection and drank a gallon of water. That's not what they did before. Oh, okay. Because sometimes patients, I don't know, they feel more at ease telling me what really went down or I know to pull it out of them. The doctor's not sitting in the office pulling, a, you know, a, a police detective inquiry on you. So they just take what your word for it. So they don't understand that you changed your diet before the urine collection was done. So don't do that. Please don't do that. We want to see how your eating affected those values. That's number one. How many am I supposed to do? Three of them. Okay. But yeah, three. I feel like that's almost like flossing when you go to the dentist. It's like, do you floss? It's like, yeah, I floss. Like, oh, <laughs> you know, I, the bowl is filled with blood uh -huh. when they tell you to spit. She hasn't flossed since 1962. <laughs> I mean, look, we as patients, I'm a patient too with stuff. So I'm like, oh yeah, uh -huh. no, no. I now have learned my lesson. I tell the truth. Hell no, mm -hmm. I do not do that, or I do do that. So they can tell me why I should, and then when I don't at home, I'm. 
nervous when, when I don't do it and go, oh, I know I better because of this. So like when I go over urine collections with patients, I tell them, here's your value. Here's we were, where we wanted to prevent kidney stones. And here's why. Mm-hmm. So when you know the why, you're more apt to do it. Holy Bajol, Jill said if I don't drink water, this is what's going on in my body. Hell no to that. Makes me a little scared. Mabel, get me the water. This is what should be happening. So we're a little bit afraid when we don't do what we're supposed to do. But we humans, we're human. Lots of times we need a knock-knock before we make a change. All right. So that's one. The other thing is, what is it? I have my notes here because I wrote a blog on this. I just haven't put it on. So eat how you're supposed to eat. Um, There is a really important one. Hold on. Oh, I want to remind you, you're not going to make a kidney stone in 24 hours. So people will say, I'm so afraid of making a stone, Jill. I don't want to go back to my old way of eating. Please do, because nobody makes a stone in 24 hours. It takes years to make a stone in some cases, sometimes months, sometimes months, depending on what type of stone former you are. But I promise you. The other thing that you should know before you do a urine collection is you should be stopping vitamins that have not been prescribed by a doctor uh, three to five days before you do a urine collection. Look at the instructions on your urine collection paperwork. Please look at them. It will give that advice, typically. Some of the vitamins, like vitamin C, can convert over to oxalate in the urine collection. Some of the vitamins you may be taking could just mess up the test. So please ask your doctor about that. If the doctor doesn't know, please ask the laboratory that's doing your urine collection. That's super important. You want to be off unprescribed vitamins. If a doctor has told you to take a vitamin, please take it. But things like calcium supplements, Tums, vitamin C, you should not be taking those during a urine collection. That's super important. And speaking of the lab, how do you get connected with that? Is that something the doctor sets you up with or um, how does that work? That's a great question. So the doctor is plugged into whatever lab they use to do urine collections. You could say, I want a litholink test, doctor. And the, the doctor will say no because the doctor is contracted to work with somebody like Quest. So the doctors in a lot of offices are contracted and must work with whatever, whatever lab they're with. Sometimes doctors, but a lot of doctors are with Litholink, and that's my preferred lab. I used to work there, so I know about their quality. But whatever lab you get asked to use, please use it. And make sure your insurance company will cover the bill. You don't want to have that scary thing, too. So just because your doctor may say, use Quest or Litholink, make sure that your insurance company will cover it. That's really important, too. Coming from a patient who has had, I don't know, up to a million dollars in, uh, over a million dollars in medical bills, you know, I had good, I have good insurance, obviously, so it pays a lot of it, but... I, I, I was on the phone with insurance companies a lot. So make sure testing is covered. And that's or at for least cancer. A good portion. For yeah, my people. stuff is for cancer. Yeah. So, uh, But you do just patient to patient. You want to make sure. Okay, so there's that. The other thing that's really important during urine collections is um, make sure that you're going to get your urine collection in on time. Lots of them are time sensitive. So I guess what I'm going to say again is please read the instructions. Litholink has really great instructions. I know because I wrote them. <laughs> <laughs> I put We put pictures in them. So they're very explicit. There are other laboratories that they're not as explicit. So if you don't understand something that your instructions are saying, please reach out to the lab there. Uh, customer service number because the the worst thing to do is to have to redo a urine collection. Some people will write on my Facebook group, um, you know, my lab says to refrigerate it. And then somebody will say, well, my lab didn't say that. And everybody gets confused. You must pay attention to your instructions. Every laboratory will do a urine collection differently. So pay attention to your instructions. If you've done a urine collection with one lab, and then you were ordered to do it with another lab, don't assume it's done the same way because it's not. Some of that urine is put in the refrigerator. 
shouldn't be. That's old school. Some and a lot of them you don't have to put in the refrigerator. So read your instructions. It's very, very important. I think really that's about it. I mean, you have to know to do follow-ups too. You have to get annuals done. Lots of times the doctors don't remind you to do that. It's very, 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 very important to do a follow-up test. After you've done a urine collection, the first one, you go through it with your doctor. Hopefully the doctor gave you a treatment plan. And then you need to do a follow-up a couple months later to see how that follow-up plan is working for you. If it's not, you may need to retweak things and or go on a medication. Some of you, a lot of you, may need medications to help. You'll still have to do the diet. That's not getting you out of it. But you will also need a medication. So that's super important to know, too. I think that about wraps it up. And if, listen, if I've missed something, write it in the comments. Hey, Jill, you should have said this, this, this. I'm always open to that, so please, and then I'll, I'll answer you in the comments. Yeah, but yeah, the testing is just so important because oh if you have... Yes. If you have some sort of ailment, why would you not test? You to have to test yeah. because you have to figure out why this is happening. And there's things on the urine collection. Here's what I was saving for later. See, I forgot, but here <laughs> it is. The urine calcium in so many of you, a v higher than 50% of the urine collections I look at on a yearly basis, the patients have high urine calcium due to high salt, high added sugar, too much meat protein too much like carnivore diet or genetically you have high urine calcium you would never know you have that unless you did a urine collection and guess what's happening to your bones folks you're losing this calcium from your bone so it's it's so important you get the urine collection if for nothing else to see if you have high urine calcium because if you do not get that fixed you will continue to be a stonemaker and you will eventually have a very high risk. I don't diagnose anybody as a nurse, but I will say you will have a very high risk of having osteoporosis going forward. I can't tell you how many of my patients, they come to me, I explain their urine collection values, I tell them here's, here's how to have the conversation with the doctor based upon these values, and please ask the doctor about the high urine calcium, and then also ask your doctor if they'll get you a DEXA scan because they've been, I, I say that because they're 40s, 50s, they're young, but they've been making stones for decades, for the last 20 years. The high urine calcium keeps coming back. Nobody's doing anything about it, and I'm worried they may have bone disease. So the patient will say, well, what the hell, Jill? I'm only 45. I know, Sammy, but this urine collection has been showing for the last five years this high urine calcium. So you should get a baseline now. Please ask the doctor if they can take care of that for you. And then the patient writes me, and they say, yes, I have osteopenia too. So look, I, I'm just telling you what I know. I know like three things in my life. I know love. I know that. I know kidney stone stuff, and, uh, you know, that's about it. Maybe, I don't even know, exercise. I know that, too. So, but that's it. And what else do I need to know? Health, exercise, love. There's nothing else, okay? But I do know this. Follow what I'm saying, all free of charge for you. Please listen to what I'm saying. Get the urine collection done. Don't fudge it up, okay? And then when you do the follow-up, by the way, I want you to do it. How you should be doing it, change your diet, change it the way the doctor wants you to do, follow the kidney stone diet, and see how remarkable the follow-up will be. It's really important that you do that. Um, and that's how you know it works. Like that's, that's why you know, you know. Oh, you know what? I forgot something. <laughs> oh, this is really important. Hold on, hold on. Okay, so there's some people that will say, Jill, I'm eating this, uh, but when I was making stones and I'm like well it's not that high in oxalate they're like uh, I'm just going to give it up anyway because I'm just afraid I can't tell you how many people give up food that they don't have to and so I say to them do this listen Henry eat that food eat it when you do your urine collection so you can see that your urine cal uh, your urine oxalate's not going to be high get your calcium needs met that day eat that sweet potato have half of it and see your urine oxalate will be low i promise the patient eats that food that they're so afraid of they love it they're afraid of it they eat it the follow up comes back they're like oh my own look at this it's beautiful it's it's my oxalate's low jill i'm going to incorporate them back of course i warn 
don't eat uh, sweet potatoes all day long. Yeah, I give sure. them, you know, everything within portion. But you can eat so many things. So if you have a food that you're like a little trepidatious about having, eat it during the urine collection so you can see what it does. All right? I promise you it's going to be okay. I so promise you that really is it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. that's what you need to know before your urine collection. And if you do want help reviewing your urine analysis, you can find that on kidneystonediet.com where you can work with Jill. But I think that's it for this week. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye, guys.